Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, is my screen visible? Okay. All right. Uh, so today we will see uh, a data science workflow. Um, we will introduce what uh, a data science workflow is. And then uh, we will discuss the steps for data science workflow and some of the uh, frameworks that we use for uh, data science workflow. And then we will uh, put some uh, conclusions to the uh, session. Uh, so as you know, uh, a data science is a, a multidisciplinary approach to extract insights and knowledge from um, structured or unstructured data. So its goal is mainly to turn the data into uh, actionable insights that will uh, drive business decisions, right? Uh, so to, to, to turn the uh, data into actionable uh, insights, uh, we, need, we need a, a workflow. Uh, that's what we call a data science workflow. It's a systematic approach to uh, any data science uh, problems, right? So uh, it, that process guides the data scientist from uh, the uh, data collection uh, up to the uh, final uh, model deployment. So there are sequential steps uh, that we need to take uh, to accomplish uh, the uh, data science project. Uh, so those sequential steps, uh, they, they, they might not be uh, a linear one, um, it depends on the framework that we are going to use. So uh, those steps will uh, employ a well-structured workflow that will offer a clear roadmap uh, for uh, the completion of the data science project. Um, so what are the what are the steps? Right. Uh, in in a data science life cycle, uh, mainly uh, there are uh, seven steps. Uh, and we start with the business understanding, right? We need to uh, know the, the business. That means what are the, the goals that we want to achieve? Uh, once we do that, once we uh, define the problem, uh, to solve that problem, since we are uh, solving a, a data-related uh, problem, the, the first thing is collecting data. That's data mining, right? Once we have the data, uh, we need to clean it, and then we do some exploration. And after that, before we uh, develop uh, a machine learning algorithm, we need to perform some feature engineering, and then uh, we uh, develop the uh, predictive models. Uh, after that, it will be uh, data visualization and communication to uh, the stakeholders so that they can uh, use that uh, result for a decision, right? So as I said, the, the, the first step is uh, defining the business objective, right? Uh, and uh, as we discussed it uh, in previous sessions, uh, we have to use the, the smart approach for defining the, uh, the objectives of the uh, business, right? So this involves collaborating with the, the stakeholders uh, to identify the business problem, formulating the objectives and define the success criteria. That, that means the, the, the metrics that we're going to use for achieving a, a certain goal. Um, so yeah, so in general, the, the main uh, or the, the start of the workflow is uh, clearly define the, the business. Uh, so that we can focus uh, 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 a roadmap uh, for completing uh, the project. Uh, once we, we do that, the next step is uh, data collection or data mining. And uh, as we know, it's the foundation of any data science project, right? Um, so in this phase, we gather relevant, relevant data from uh, different sources uh, that can be included um, from a database, uh, APIs, uh, you can use web scraping, 
or publicly available data sets. Um, there are different categories. You can say uh, in-house data, third-party data, uh, etc. Right? Those are the, the various sources for uh, our project. Uh, so ensuring the relevant uh, relevancy and uh, quality data at the beginning is an important step for the uh, subsequent uh, steps, right? Uh, so in, in, in the data collection phase, uh, we need to be mindful of privacy uh, and ethical consideration when we handle uh, sensitive data science uh, projects, right? Uh, once we have the, the, the data, uh, since the data is uh, messy, noisy, and it might have uh, missing values and inconsistency, uh, we need to do um, data cleaning uh, and pre-processing, right? So we need to uh, clean the data that, that involves uh, uh, rectifying the, the, the above issues. So that, mean, that means um, removing uh, redundant values, uh, handling the missing values, uh, correcting data types, that's like changing um, uh, a string object into integer or float. Uh, it depends on the data and also dealing with uh, the outliers, right? So it's it's important step for um, before we move on to uh, analyzing it and uh, develop the uh, machine learning algorithm. Um, I hope I'm audible. And if uh, are there any questions so far? Is it clear? Uh, okay, good. We we are just touching the, the steps, right? So, um, sorry. So once we uh, clean the data, the next step is to do uh, EDA, explanatory data analysis, right? Uh, you have done this a lot of times since the beginning of this training. Uh, and you know, it's a critical phase uh, in any data science workflow, and that involves uh, exploring the data to uncover patterns. Uh, you do some visualization, uh, you detect anomalies, you do correlation, uh, and from there you, you get some potential insights from the, from the data, right? And th those EDA involves uh, descriptive statistics for variables like mean, standard deviation. Uh, those those uh, statistics are essential for uh, the overview of the, the data distributions, right? And we do um, data visualizations through uh, different uh, plot types, like histograms, box charts, uh, scatter plots, etc. And that will uh, give you to inspect the data pattern and identify outliers to understand their distribution and uh, relationships, right? Uh, so understanding the nature of the problem you aim to solve is essential. So that understanding uh, will be addressed here. Uh, what I mean is that uh, the, the, the data will drive the, 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 the project, right? Uh, if you see some projects, if, um, yeah, of course, we, we, we define the project uh, at the beginning. And then we get to the uh, data collection, uh, data cleaning, and when we explore, uh, those explorations might give us an insight that uh, some of the goals might not be attained using this uh, data we have, right? So uh, you might go back and revise your uh, goals, uh, and then you, you come back from uh, you come back for the uh, EDA. So whether it's supervised or a supervised task involving, uh, I, I mean, you, you need to uh, understand the data and from that you can you can uh, determine the, the model. Uh, after we did the uh, EDA, the next step is um, before we do the, the modeling, sometimes uh, we need to extract uh, new features or transform those features. So it, it involves feature engineering, right? So before we jump 
onto the data modeling, uh, you need to address the, the feature engineering. That means uh, you, you need to uh, create or you might need to create new features um, or transform those. So feature engineering, it's uh, a crucial aspect of data science and machine learning that involves creating new features or transforming the existing ones into uh, uh, to improve uh, model performance, right? In your previous challenge, uh, you, you were uh, able to merge the, 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 the two data sets and from those data sets, you extract or select the important features and then from there, uh, you, you created new ones, right? Like the velocity, uh, the date day uh, purchase, uh, et cetera, right? So yeah, feature uh, engineering, you, you, need, you need really to uh, know the, the domain, uh, which means you need to understand the, 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 the data, right? Or the, the, um, the domain or the area that you are uh, trying to solve. Right, those will help you to uh, extract the new features or the relevant features. Right, um, so it it also involves converting categorical variables into numerical representation, uh, because as we know that the machine learning algorithms uh, they 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 need uh, a numeric values so that uh, you can change or convert the categorical variables into numeric. Uh, using uh, techniques like one holding order or uh, label encoding, uh, et cetera, right? So uh, sometimes we also need to take it further uh, and reduce the, the number of features uh, using uh, like the principal component analysis uh, so that it will uh, minimize the uh, computational cost, but retaining the critical information uh, is also another uh, part of feature engineering, uh, parameter reduction or the feature reduction uh, might be necessary uh, sometimes. All right, and once we, we, we have or we have done the uh, feature engineering, then we start the model de uh, development, right? So in, in, in that phase, uh, uh, we will develop uh, the and actually, we first select the, the algorithm or the machine learning algorithm that we want to use. And then uh, we, we train it and we fine tune the, the parameters. Uh, after that, we, we deploy, uh, no, evaluate. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, it involves uh, developing uh, or selecting and then training the algorithm uh, using a set of uh, training data, and then we assess the uh, model's ability to generalize its learning uh, to uh, previously unseen data uh, is evaluated. Uh, in, in, in this case, we, we, I mean, I include the, the uh, model evaluation instead of uh, putting it as a separate uh, data science workflow element. Uh, it, it's included in the uh, model development. Um, then, the, so yeah, uh, we need to assess its its ability or its accuracy uh, for prediction or classification, right? So that's the 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 step that we need to take. Model development. Once we have done, uh, we have that we we deploy, right? Uh, not only deploy, we have to monitor it and maintain it uh, while it's in the uh, wave or in the cloud. So once a model is validated, uh, uh, it's deployed into production, right? So that involves integrating the model into applications uh, or setting up APIs or uh, using cloud uh, platforms for real-time predictions, right? Uh, after that, a continuous monitoring is essential uh, to ensure the model's performance. Uh, and you have to update it now and then, uh, depending on uh, the, the need we have or the, the new data that we have. Uh, we also need to address and detect concept drift or uh, data distribution changes, right? Uh, 
um, yeah, regularly retrain the model with the new data to maintain its accuracy, uh, collaborate with others to fine tune and adopt uh, models as needed, uh, and also stay updated on the latest techniques, tools, and best practices. Right, once once you have a model, um, another better model might be developed. So you might want to change uh, your 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 model, and then yeah, uh, you have to adopt. Um, we have to monitor and maintain uh, now and then. So these are the, the uh, main steps that we follow for a data science project. These are the general steps. Uh, and we have uh, different uh, data science workflow frameworks, uh, which they differ, uh, but most of them have the same or common elements. Oh, sorry, the, the final step is communicating and reporting. Right. Once we deploy uh, the, the, the um, or finish the modeling and the deployment, we need to communicate the result with the stakeholders, right? So that they can uh, make a decision uh, and it's key part of the workflow. So this involves like creating reports, dashboards, visualizations uh, that will uh, convey the findings in, in an understandable and actionable manner. So we uh, communicate those results uh, so that the uh, stakeholders will make uh, a decision based on the uh, obtained results. All right, so the uh, data, data science uh, workflow frameworks, uh, there are several work frameworks specifically designed to streamline and manage uh, data science projects. And those uh, provide approach to handle the various stages of the data science life cycle, right? So as I said, there are uh, uh, different uh, frameworks, uh, despite their diversity uh, in approaches, uh, the, there are several common elements uh, across the different data science workflow frameworks, right? So uh, as I said earlier, those steps that we follow uh, uh, for the different frameworks, they, they are not strictly linear, right? But rather they are iterative and allowing for revisiting and refining earlier stages uh, as new insights emerge, right? Uh, so what are the, the different workflows? Um, uh, among the, 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 the different ones, the notable ones include uh, the CRISP uh, DM model, that's uh, cross industrial standard processing for uh, data mining. Uh, it focuses on understanding the business environment. That's the first step we, we defined and the problem at hand, then moves to the data understanding, uh, preparation, modeling, and uh, evaluation. And the workflow uh, looks like this, right? <clears throat> You need to understand the business, and then you need to understand your data, uh, like uh, the uh, pre-processing and the EDA are included in this uh, data understanding. Uh, and then uh, if this data, right, uh, mm, you, you might think it, this data might not attain uh, certain goals uh, during your business understanding or uh, when you set your goals, right? In that case, you might go back and revisit your uh, business understanding or reset uh, your goals, right? Once we do that, uh, we, we do data preparation. That's like feature engineering, right? And then once we do the feature engineering, uh, we, we model it, right? And sometimes, the, 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 the model that we think uh, is best for our prepared data might not perform well. Uh, and in that case, uh, that might be because we might include um, features that are not necessary, or uh, we might need other new uh, features that we need to include in the data, right? So, which means we might come back to the uh, data preparation uh, again, right? And once we model the data, we evaluate it and then we deploy it. Um, but before we deploy it, uh, 
uh, after the evaluation, we need to make sure that we attain our business objective or uh, business goals, right? And once we check that, then we can deploy it. So this uh, is called the uh, six phase uh, CRISP uh, DM methodology or uh, workflow uh, framework. Uh, I hope that's clear. Am I still audible? Yeah, I'm live. Uh, is it clear? Um, any questions? I see there is a message. Sorry, yeah, yeah, might be a lame question, but in feature engineering, how do we know if the if there are new features to be uh, created, uh, or is it at no? It's not a, a trial and error. As I said uh, in one of the, uh, the the step, I mean in the. Uh, feature engineering process, uh, I said you need to understand the domain, right? You need to understand the, the subject, the subject matter that you want to uh, solve, right? For example, uh, in maybe in a commerce uh, a company, uh, if you want to uh, do sale prediction, uh, you need to understand uh, how uh, sales work, how uh, the the different products, uh, or yeah, that you need to have a, a, a domain knowledge, so that uh, from that you can you can extract uh, what you call it new features. So it's not a, a trial in the uh, approach. Uh, you you need uh, a domain knowledge or a subject matter. Mm, uh, I believe uh, in, in your last week project, uh, for example, you um, uh, created like a velocity, right? Uh, what, what, that, what, what is that? How did you get that velocity, right? It's not a, a trial and error, right? You just want to know how often uh, a customer buys a product, right? So that, that's a kind of uh, domain knowledge. So for feature engineering, uh, you need to uh, know uh, the domain. If you don't know, you, you have to incorporate other people uh, so that they can uh, explain and yeah. Um, I, I hope that answers uh, your question, Nadia. Uh, is that clear? Uh, all right. Let's move on. Uh, the other uh, framework is the, they, they call it awesome. It's like a, a pronunciation, but it's O-S-E-M-N. Uh, it's another uh, framework. Uh, it stands for obtain, scrap, extract, modify, explore, model, and interpret. Right, all these are included in the steps that we have been discussing. Obtain means data mine or uh, acquire the data, right? And then uh, we have the, the scrap or scrap means clean it, right? And then uh, we, we explore it. Uh, it's, this, this is a mistake. This is not extract, rather explore, right? Once you do the exploration and then you do the model, right? And from the model, you, you, you interpret from its output. Th this is kind of compact, but the, the different uh, uh, steps are included within uh, the, the, the different uh, elements here, right? So when, when we uh, explore uh, that, I mean, we, we, when we say explore, that might include the, the feature engineering, uh, et cetera and the model uh, that will include developing the model uh, and also uh, deploying it, right? The, the, the interpretation uh, comes after the uh, output of the model, right? So, yeah. So this awesome uh, framework, uh, it's simple. It distills the complex process of data science project into five clear steps, right? Uh, obtain, scrap, explore, model, and interpret. Uh, and also it makes sense 
right? When you when you uh, follow that those uh, elements, it, it makes sense. It presents uh, a logical flow um, of the general data science life cycle, right? And it provides a shared understanding. Uh, and the other one is uh, the Harvard's framework. It's similar to CRISP-DM, but with a strong emphasis on communication and stakeholder engagement throughout the, the process. Uh, there is what we call it uh, AWS uh, SageMaker, and that offers a cloud-based a cloud platform for building, training, and deploying machine learning models uh, and integrate closely with uh, other uh, AWS uh, services, Amazon Web Services, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, each framework, it has its own strings and it suits for different types of projects uh, uh, for uh, different organizational contexts, right? So you, you, your choice will be, will be based on that the project you are solving or the approach that you you going to um, follow. So the choice of the framework depends on several factors such as project's complexity, uh, team's expertise, and the specific requirement of the the business problem uh, being addressed. Right. So these are the uh, some of the, the the frameworks. So in conclusion, uh, in today's data driven world. Understanding and implementing a structured data science workflow is essential for extracting uh, valuable insights uh, for uh, business decision, right? And the workflow frameworks, they play a crucial role in guiding a data science project, providing a structured approach to tackle the complexity. Um, uh, yeah, uh, while there is no one size fit for all framework, uh, but understanding the common elements that we discussed at the, the, the beginning and comparing the different frameworks can help teams to choose the most appropriate methodology for their projects. Um, as you can see from the references you have been given, uh, at the end, uh, there is a table for comparison uh, for the different uh, frameworks. You can have a look at it and understand what they how they differ how they uh, are similar the, um, yeah so ultimately the goal is to uh, facilitate efficient and effective data science projects that deliver valuable insights and uh, drive decision making uh, i hope it's clear uh, if you guys have any question or concepts that i need to clarify uh, Please ask. Any questions? Junior, Yabstra, Nadia? Is it clear? Okay. Uh, it's clear. Thank you. Uh, then, yeah, uh, have a good evening. Bye.